What up techies? The effects of climate change are making our planet more unstable. If we do not reduce emissions, civilizations may be destroyed. Politicians are unwilling to take serious action while the fossil fuel business resists change. Even though many scientists and campaigners call for it, humanity cannot preserve itself by overcoming its craving for rapid fulfillment and inherent self-interest. Avoiding the apocalypse when it's staring us in the face is hard. Climate change is a natural and present danger to our species, and it's hard to ignore the reports that say it could lead to the collapse of civilization. However, we can't give up hope. We still have time to prevent the apocalypse, but we must act now. Scientists say we must limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius to avoid catastrophic consequences. This means reducing our reliance on fossil fuels, protecting our ecosystems, and working together to find solutions. It's not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. We have the power to prevent the apocalypse and must use it wisely. How can we avert the end of the world? According to several reports, the effects of climate change pose a threat to the continuation of human civilization and our very existence. Additionally, it is difficult to avoid. Science says, temperatures on every continent have increased by 1.2 degrees Celsius since the beginning of industrialization. Under the terms of the Paris Agreement, it is doubtful that global warming will be contained to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Climate change's effects make extreme weather more likely and more intense. If average global temperatures rise by more than 2 degrees Celsius, more ecosystems will be threatened. Many developing nations risk being unable to provide food for their populations if temperatures reach 3 degrees Celsius. Heat waves are a problem on a global scale. The failure of large natural systems is inevitable. Costing billions of dollars will be hurricanes, wildfires, and droughts that are more frequent and destructive. It will be difficult for subsistence farmers and regions with low incomes. This catastrophe will result in the displacement of 100 million people. The apocalypse starts at 4 minus 8 degrees Celsius, the hothouse Earth. The Earth may not be able to support our large human population at those temperatures, and billions of people may die, leaving the survivors on an alien planet that is hostile and where things change so quickly. Because they lack both action and perspective, Many scientists believed that a world with temperatures of 4 degrees or higher was our future until about 10 years ago. This particular apocalypse is highly improbable, but if nothing is done to address climate change, temperatures could rise by 3 degrees Celsius by 2100. This is a horrible and intolerable situation. Most climate scientists believe that recent progress has allowed us to stave off this potentially catastrophic climate change. Despite the danger, it does not appear that humanity will be extinguished. Civilization may change over time, but it will continue to exist. What has changed over the past 10 years? And is this something to celebrate? You've heard, last decade's climate policies failed miserably. No comprehensive, legally binding emissions law was passed. A decade of mediocre years? This true story is why so many people quit trying. Despite the lack of climate policies, fossil fuel lobbying, and misinformation campaigns, progress was made. Here are some 20-year-old changes. From 2000 to 2010, greenhouse gas emissions increased by three times the previous decade's 24%. Government subsidies to stimulate the economy have boosted the demand for fossil fuels. China and India used coal as their cheapest fuel, while rich countries stuck to fossil fuels. In 2010, many predicted this would continue, but the next decade was different. China reports that developing countries' coal consumption has slowed or leveled off. It's also fallen in wealthy nations like the UK and the US. Since 2015, 44 countries have stopped building new coal-fired power plants. Coal is on its last legs. 10 years ago, that was a pipe dream. Now it's no longer feasible despite our expectations that new technology is cheap and widely available. Renewable energy is booming. Wind power has tripled in price in a decade. But solar power costs have dropped tenfold in the same period. Despite massive subsidies and global infrastructure, coal and other fossil fuel burning power plants are cheaper than some renewable power sources. Power output variation is a significant obstacle. Renewables require expensive energy storage to be a reliable power source. Some may argue that wind and solar power are nice, but a complete overhaul of the world's industrial system is still needed. Yes, but the change is spreading beyond energy. People are improving technology to reduce emissions. By 2021, 8 out of 10 new cars in Norway will be electric or hybrid. Electric heating, better insulation, and ships traveling at half speed to save fuel. Scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs work to solve climate change. More people prioritize climate change prevention and apply their ingenuity to the problem. Cement, electronics, and steel production could use low-carbon solutions like carbon capture and artificial meat.
the more we use these technologies, the cheaper future technology will be. As prices drop, more people use them, we already see the results. Even without a recession, rich countries' CO2 output is falling. Since 2000, the EU has decreased by 21%, Italy by 28%, the UK by 35%, and Denmark by 43%. Emissions are linked to economic growth. Until recently, producing more emissions was the only way to get rich. Developing and developed countries debated whether reducing emissions while reducing their poor populations was fair. In the last decade, we've seen that prosperity can rise without greenhouse gas emissions. Czech emissions fell 13%, while GDP rose by 27%. France's GDP grew by 15%, while CO2 emissions fell by 14%. Romania dropped 8% and rose 35%. The US reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 4% while increasing GDP by 26%. It's no secret that the planet is in trouble. Climate change is accurate, and it's happening right now. The rich countries of the world are primarily to blame, thanks to their reliance on dirty industries like manufacturing and production. However, there's a silver lining to this dark cloud. The same technologies that have allowed rich nations to pollute at such high levels can also be used to decarbonize the economy and phase out fossil fuels entirely. This would be a massive win for the environment and provide opportunities for emerging markets to partake in the prosperity of the global economy without harming the planet. There's no need for rich countries to continue exporting their emissions to the developing world. We can all move towards a cleaner, brighter future with technological innovation. No one is denying that we have our work cut out for us when it comes to reversing the effects of climate change. But it's important to remember that technology won't be the only thing that saves us. We also need to change our behavior. Just as we've become used to buying more and more consumer goods, we've become increasingly reliant on fossil fuels. But if we want to reduce our impact on the planet, we need to find ways to use less energy. That means changing how we build cities, grow food, and move around. It also means passing and implementing policies that will make those changes possible. Fortunately, some trend lines are finally pointing in the right direction. We can only imagine what we could accomplish if we had the financial and political support to take on the fossil fuel industry. But even without that, we need to stay hopeful. Because if we give up, they've already won. We're in the fourth phase of the climate change debate. The first phase was climate change isn't evident. The second phase was humans don't cause real climate change. The third phase was humans cause climate change. But it's not that bad. And now we're in the fourth phase. Climate change is unavoidable. We will all die. To change the world, we must believe it's possible. We have proof. Climate change has become a significant issue in free elections as our industrial system evolves. As more millennials gain power, they prioritize environmental issues and develop innovative solutions. By 2022, most democracies and autocracies will set net zero targets. Years of hard work are paying off. Pressure must rise to keep today's promises. It's easy to feel like giving up when we're bombarded with scary scenarios about the planet's future. The truth is, though, that giving up is not going to prevent the worst case scenario from happening. It's only going to make it more likely. Change our human habits, and we can still avoid the worst case scenario mitigate the worst outcomes, adapt in advance, and protect the most vulnerable people. So let's not give up. Let's change our human habits and ensure future generations inherit a world better off for our actions today. We owe it to them and ourselves. The past decade has shown that progress is being made, and dire predictions are just that. Despite the urgency, we must disprove the predictions. Only hope remains. Having children won't end the world or humanity. Acting today won't be regrettable. Despite powerful industry's efforts, society is changing. Doomsday thinking, inaction, and weaponized hopelessness are those in power's only trump cards. Change our human habits and fix climate change. Let's us know in the comments section below.